Hey everybody, my name is Patrick. Welcome to my dirty garage. And today we are going to make some weather covers for our Lynx cameras. I have over the last few years been producing my own weather covers for my Lynx cameras. I make them out of acrylic, you know, polyacrylic or Lexan or whatever you want to say. Um, and I have decided to share the documentation of my kind of latest iterations of them because uh, I've changed around the process and I think I've made it a little bit more friendly to somebody doing it at home. And actually the process that I've arrived at, I think makes a really good cover. So first of all, I, I don't sell covers to people. I occasionally give them away to people that do training with me. Um, but for the most part, I, I really don't sell camera covers. I make them for myself. And so the whole purpose of this video is for me to show you what I've learned over the years in making them. Because I've made probably 10 to 15 covers over the course of time for basically every camera that I've owned. Uh, I've, been, I've made plenty of mistakes with them, like this piece of crap. And I've made some really good covers too, like the one that I made in the last few days. But even this one, I, I had some difficulties with, and I'll explain you know, kind of the logic behind it. And hopefully we'll create a reasonable weekend or long weekend project for you. So what you're going to need, obviously you're going to need a sheet of acrylic. Uh, you can get polyacrylic or Alexan or whatever. We're just going to call it acrylic. They sell it in multiple sizes and multiple thicknesses. I recommend just getting an 18 by 24 sheet of quarter inch thick. That will give you enough material using the cutting guide, which I will include down below or put on screen right now or something. Um, that will have enough material for you to make a cover for a vision and also an Identalynx, uh, one of the, the newer white Identalynxes. So I have a Bosch table saw and all you need to do cutting with the table saw is the appropriate blade, which is a fine finishing blade. Mine has 60 teeth from Diablo and also really helps to have a zero clearance insert, which means that there's minimal chip out as you go through the whole thing. My preference is to cut with the table saw. I did it for years using a utility blade or the cutting tool that they have available next to the Lexan at the uh, hardware store. Uh, this way is so immensely faster. It, it is worth the extra 60 bucks for the blade and, and taking the time. So uh, I've done a really quick rip cut to kind of bring down to size the overall piece that I'm gonna be using for the camera cover of the vision and then I'm going to rip off the back of it and the back of it's going to go to be formed uh, to be used to create little bricks which are going to keep the cameras in place. Uh, just one quick note uh, with with the table saw is that chip out is a thing and also kind of these pieces are so light you'll see there I actually turned off the the saw with my foot because I didn't want to risk any kickback from the free piece basically. Um, it's kind of complex, but these pieces are very, very light and there's enough vibration on a table saw that these things can go from being clean and clear and free to being kicked back at you relatively quickly. And so I didn't want to take that risk. And so I often turn off the saw uh, pretty much right as I'm, I'm done with the, the blade uh, passing through, through the piece. Um, you know, you operate your table saw as best you see fit. Uh, I am using, you'll see uh, hearing protection and I'm using safety glasses, and I have removed the guards to maintain visibility. One of the benefits of using a table saw is that you're going to be able to produce these little bricks, as I like to call them. Um, basically, they're, they're little pieces of, of Lexan where you, know, you cut off and, and make little kind of fingers or whatever you want to say, uh, but they're really helpful in keeping the camera in place as it kind of located within the, the device. Uh, within the cover and so they, they're really difficult to make by hand. Uh, you can do it with the Dremel and a cutoff tool but they are really tricky so if you have a table saw even if it's you know kind of like well I'm only going to make one or two of these things I would still recommend using a, a, the uh, getting a zero uh, clearance you know insert and then uh, making them by hand because it's a lot easier to do with uh, on, the, on the table saw. The next step is obviously to bend it into place. Um, and this is where I have finally made some choices that have really helped, helped me out. Uh, you can always bend this with a heat gun and you just go back and forth constantly over it. But ultimately you're gonna be heating up a much, much wider area of the acrylic. 
Now they sell at great expense these really nice uh, strip heaters for acrylic and you can go on eBay or you can go on Amazon, you can find them. Uh, they're two to five hundred dollars or so. Um, I have a solution that's much, much less expensive than that, probably in the $80 range. Um, and so anyway, to give you an idea though of, of why you would want to use uh, my solution rather than the heat gun, this is the heat, what the heat gun will produce as far as the, the curve, the bend is pretty wide. Um, and then versus what my solution is, is creating really, really nice, tight, uh, specific and, and beautiful corners. Uh, it really makes it worthwhile. This is an older cover for uh, one of the old fat, fat body lengths. Uh, it is going into retirement mode. I might even cut it up next time I have the table saw. So my solution is uh, a nichrome wire. Uh, so nichrome is nickel chromium and it's readily available and you're probably already familiar with it because it's in a lot of things that have to heat up. So if you have a toaster, an old, old school toaster at the house, you've got some nichrome wire in the house. So basically, it's a wire that has really high resistance. Normally, wires want to have very low resistance because you want to be able to send a signal through them. But nichrome wire is the exact opposite. It is requiring that resistance. So when you combine some nichrome wire with a uh, power unit, a power supply, you can heat this up. So you can see here, I've got a nichrome wire spread across um, this strap piece of, 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 uh, of wood. And then I've got a nice little channel of aluminum, and that helps really focus the heat up onto the acrylic. And then I've got you know, some more scrap pieces just to keep things in place. So basically the idea is that I'd make sure that I have it all lined up and put it on top and then turn it on. Um, actually, let me do that, it's fine, let's do it. And you'll see that the wire will heat up and it will glow orange and then almost kind of a white red hot. Um, and you can actually feel the heat coming off of it. It's tremendous. So right now I'm also running this at 20 volts and 8 amps. Um, I'm going to turn it off. Uh, the one thing you'll need to have on the end of it is a uh, spring. So that spring is there to collect the wire. As it, gets, as it heats up, it will get longer. And so the, the, you, it, when you set it up, it'll be like this. And then the, wire, the, the spring will contract as, as the wire becomes looser and go from there. Now, the first mistake that I made was not getting the correct gauge of wire. Uh, what I got originally was 36 gauge wire, uh, which this is five thousandths of an inch thick. Um, it's a little bit thicker than a human hair. It is uh, very, very, very thin. So, um, what you actually want to do is be in the 15 to 20 gauge wire range. Um, but also you wanna have one with a pretty high resistance. So if you go on Amazon right now and look around, you can find really thick wire, but it has actually a fairly low resistance, even though it's nichrome wire. Because I didn't want to order any more, um, what I actually did was I took my 36 gauge wire and I ran it back and forth uh, 10 times total and then cranked it down. And it, so it ends up being, this is about uh, 14 gauge wire, um, all told, and it's braided basically. Uh, and it worked just fine. So, uh, you know, I went from being kind of annoyed with, with my purchasing skills to being really happy with it. Um, the power unit I got, uh, Eventech uh, power supply, and it goes up to 30 volts. And I've seen people be successful in the 10 volt and 10 amp range, uh, just because every, every nichrome wire is different. Mine ended up being, uh, you know, higher than that on the volts and lower than that on the amps. So you can see that I am doing the first bend. It was on and heating up for about four or five minutes or so. And I've got these blocks that have a nice 90 degree angle on them so that we can kind of put them in place. And then I, I tested it out with the camera just to make sure that everything fit nicely. And I was pretty happy with the fit overall. And there we go. We got a really nice, super sharp bend really happy about it. There's a little bit of deformation in the corners. And the deformation can be a problem when you are putting a backing plate onto the uh, kind of U-channel for the camera, which would protect the back connection points and everything. But in this case, uh, it, it's really a lot better than I was used to when using a heat gun. 
and so it, it really was not a, a big deal, especially because the acrylic cement that I, I use is medium bodied, and so it'll fill in some, some gaps pretty naturally, and so not a big deal. So I place the piece back on and I'm bending it and I'm, I've put down a mark exactly where the camera edge is and I put that mark exactly on top of the wire. If you would like to have 90 degree bends all the way around and that'll allow you to take the camera in and out a little bit more easily, then I'd recommend doing it a little bit closer to the other bend by maybe an eighth of an inch or so. Um, and I'm talking about that right now on camera. Little bit of foam with adhesive. It's going to put it down here for the time being, although it's probably actually going to end up being here permanently. Just want to create a little bit of a gap here, and then we're going to bend it up. Nice, we're tied to it. And we're just gonna let it cool down naturally. There we go. So just like toothpaste, you're gonna run a light bead around. Okay. As I said, it likes to run out. Not wasting any time. And we're going to drop this down on it. With very, very light pressure. I just want to kind of see it seal up all the way around. Okay. And then just going to flip it over. And then we'll continue and finalize the seal. And then we're going to come back in with the Dremel and we'll round off the corners. And this side will be good. So let's take a look at our work. Uh, I've spent about two hours over the course of about three or four days. And I have designed it, cut, molded, and then glued all the things together. And I've got two cases. So let's take a look at the Identilinks case first. Um, it is three inches by three inches by three inches. There's a plate on the bottom. Doesn't need to be this large though. It really, we could do with one up front that's about a quarter of the size and then one up in the, in the back that's the same size. And we've got four of the little bricks inside of it. Those bricks correspond with the sides and the, and the, and the you know, straightened off edges of the Identilynx. And the Identilynx goes in with a little bit of a challenge but it's not gonna come out of here all that often. I don't transport my cameras in the cases that they came with originally. So it will rest in here like this and you can see like I can do whatever I want with it. It probably could fall over and, and still be okay because the uh, little ball mount is going to be here. And so actually it would struggle to come out of this. It, it should be firmly ensconced. Um, some people might worry about this back being open. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, this camera is relatively waterproof in and of itself, knock on wood, and if it was really that bad, I could just throw some tape on it. Although, someday I'll probably be bored enough to go ahead and create a backspace on it, or back, back plate on it, uh, and put it in, in place. So, but I'm really happy with this so far. Um, I will say, I think I actually did use a different piece of Lexan from what I cut off from the Vision but it shouldn't be that difficult to get a smaller piece of Lexan or whatever. And if you're making these, you might have more than one camera, so you could always use with a couple of them. And you always might make a mistake, so you might need to buy some more anyway. So I mean, I've made plenty of camera covers that never saw the light of day. Now with the Vision one, I'm quite happy with it. Um, I mean, it, it is about five and a half inches tall, six inches wide, and again, five and a half on this side. And then there's a back plate. Uh, it is not quite done. I will have to put a little place for the radio links uh, re uh, sending unit, or re sorry, receiving unit on, on the back. And what I'll do, do is probably create a little, little cradle for it to go into, and then I can pull it out of there at the end of the day. 
My cameras rarely actually are removed from the cover. So it's important to me that the camera stays in place. Normally I've done this by, by putting in a whole bunch of these little brick guys, but on this one, I'm really pleased because the, the case itself, the, the cover itself is just a little bit angled in. It's a little bit more concave. That means that the sides of the, the acrylic actually grab onto the camera itself. And the result is it's really, really tight and you'll see in a moment. I do, however, I have been putting in this foam. I, I mean, I put in a pretty thick piece of foam here because it's just what I had laying around. But even a, a smaller piece of foam or craft foam would be fantastic to have on the inside of this. Just kind of keeps it nicely on top without scratching it up or anything like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, when we put it in, you can see we have to squeeze it out just a little bit, but then it goes into place. It sits nicely. We can flip it over, no problem at all. It's not, there's not a, much play in it or anything like that. It's not gonna be bouncing around. It's, it's a really good little case. I'm really happy with it. Uh, that, that concavity really does do a good job with kind of making sure that it's in and out. I mean, I can get it out, but you can see like the kind of stasis of it is that it's gonna try to grab and, and stay onto it. And if this falls off, it's not as big of a deal because you have the camera in, in grasp. So, um, you know, and for me, I transport my cameras in a box with, that's a padded box, basically. I don't take off all the stuff, I just keep it in the case, so it's really excellent. But I do like the fact that you can take it off with relative ease. Because uh, the one thing I'll tell you is that in a, on a windy day, obviously this has a much bigger profile than just the camera. And so it's, it's really helpful on a windy day to be able to just take it out. But if it's a, you know, not a big deal, um, if it's a, you know, a nice and, and sunny day, I, you know, and it's not, not that windy, you leave it in here, no problem at all. It won't overheat or anything like that, knock on wood. Um, but it should be fine. And I think it's a, a very accomplishable thing. Hopefully, I've showed you that, that this is an accomplishable thing for you to do at home. Uh, now you can always buy some of these. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to uh, some camera cases, uh, camera covers that are sold on VS Athletics and you're welcome to go buy them there. Um, but for much less of, you know, cost wise, you can make them on your own. And if you've got more than one camera or you can, you can make them for your friends or whatever, uh, it, you're welcome to share the design that, that I've created to make your own. Um, so I hope this helps. I hope this was at least a little bit interesting to see kind of what somebody might do in order to make this happen. Um, and thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed. I mean, if you watch this whole thing and you haven't subscribed, I, I, please subscribe. Um, and remember, time is luck. Thank you.